Okay, in this chapter, we'll take a look at some new tricks for the updated mixer and elsewhere. In the quick start videos and new feature videos went over most of the new mixer and the updated interface pretty well, but there are still a few hidden gems. For instance, in the main project window, open the overview pane, which obviously shows you all sorts of great information like record format and frame rate, but in Cubase 7, it's interactive. You can click on any of these to call up the project setup dialog. At the bottom of the inspector, there's a caret, and this lets you access track controls, but at the very bottom is a new option to show track pictures. At the top of the inspector is yet another search window. If you call up your transport panel, then click and hold on the volume button, a larger fader appears that lets you scroll up and down. You can also scroll left and right through your project using the green bar at the bottom of the transport panel. Or you can even click and drag on the counter itself. And this same trick works to fast set the locators for punch in and punch out by clicking and dragging on their value vertically. And you can even use this trick with the tempo. Spend some time in the key commands window and check out all of the things that you can assign to keystrokes to save time. For example, Instead of adding audio tracks by the usual project, add track, audio track menu method, you can find the option to add mono audio track in key commands and assign it to an easy to remember key. Now I can add tracks with the touch of a button. Okay, let's get into a little more detail on the new mixer. And I want to take a closer look at two things. First is the envelope shaper or transient designer as they're sometimes called. Now, if you haven't messed with one of these before, it may sound a little confusing. I mean, it sounds like a fairly exotic device to include on every channel. But in reality, this is really just a user-friendly compressor. Basically, you use an envelope shaper and a compressor to solve similar problems. They just have slightly different controls. So here's how you can use it to punch up a typical drum part. But the envelope shaper can cause the attack portion to become noticeably louder, so it's not a bad idea to activate the brick wall limiter at the same time. Now, another new module is the noise gate. Like anything else in Cubase, it can be used correctively or creatively. Now, the original purpose of a noise gate was to cut off or close noisy audio channels when there wasn't any usable signal there. A classic example is cleaning up a noisy drum kit. Now, if you haven't used noise gates or simply gates before, you can think of them as kind of an auto mute. And you dial the threshold up or down to select when they kick on and off. So if you have 12 mics on a drum kit, but your drummer only has two sticks and two feet, at any given moment, there are going to be eight mics open on stage, but not doing much. They just sit there and suck in rattle and noise. Careful use of gates can eliminate a lot of this unwanted background and clean up your kit like this. Of course, Phil Collins made The Gate part of that 80s sound by applying it to the reverb on his snare drum. And copyright laws make it impossible to give you an example here, but almost any of his hits employ this effect. 
Now, if you want to set that up in Cubase, it's easy. Start by adding a really big reverb to a snare drum. In this example, I'll do it as an insert, but you could do it as a send as well. What's important is that your gate comes after the reverb so that it can cut off the reverb. Then activate the gate and adjust it until you get the sound you want. A short release time is key to this effect. Now, if you want to check out another example of creative gating, give Madonna's Don't Tell Me Another Listen. A big component in this famous guitar sound is the use of fairly extreme gating. Another way that you can use the humble noise gate creatively is by using the sidechain. This will allow a track of your choosing to control when the gate opens and closes. Now, here's an example. Let's enable the gate on this guitar part and enable its sidechain. Now, how you set up the track to control the gate is up to you. Here's just one example of how I like to do it. I'm going to duplicate the drums track. And then I'll delete everything but the kick drum. Then I can route this track to the sidechain input. And here we go. Now, the way we have this set up, every time the kick drum sounds, the gate closes. Now, this means that the sound is emphasized on the offbeat, which is cool. But check this out. If we move all the MIDI notes in the trigger track by half a measure, it'll cause the gate to close in between beats for a totally different rhythmic effect. Now I want to show you something completely different, a quick example of using the Project Logical Editor. This is just one quick example, of course, but you should be able to figure out how to adapt the concept for your workflow. The Project Logical Editor is similar to the concept of macros if you're a Windows person, or if you're more of a Mac person, this is similar to the Automator. Regardless of the platform, the Project Logical Editor allows you to set up instructions that Cubase will follow. And one note, there is a difference between the logical editor, which is strictly MIDI operations, and the project logical editor, which is more broad-based. Now, in this example, I'll show you how I set up a command I call scoot. This is something that I use when cleaning up my narration tracks. And when we record narration for a video like the one you're watching, there are often coughs, noises, mistakes, and so forth that need removed. That leaves a gap that needs to be closed. Now, one option would be to click and drag around everything after the cursor and drag all that stuff forward. But to speed things up, we did this. Set up a rule that has the container type set to all types so that everything is fair game. Set the bool, which stands for Boolean operator, 
to and so that we can add additional criteria. Then set the target as position and the condition as beyond cursor. So at this point, we're telling Cubase, for this rule, please consider everything after the cursor. Now, down below, we need to tell Cubase what to do with all the stuff we just selected. So set the target to position and the operation to subtract and the parameters to two and seconds, respectively. Then save it and name it. Now, to assign this to a key command, open the key command dialog, navigate to the folder called Project Logical Editor, locate the new command, and assign it. Boil this down, and what we've just set up is a command that will select everything after the cursor and scoot it forward two seconds. And here's how it works. Obviously, you have to spend some time to really get comfortable with this feature, but believe me, it is worth it in terms of work that you can save yourself with repetitive tasks. All right, finally, let me show you one way to create a very cool and very popular effect, the tape stop effect. If you're not familiar with the term tape stop, this is the effect where it sounds like the entire mix is suddenly being slowed down, as if it were being played on a record player or a reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder, which was suddenly halted. Now, there are presets called Tape Stop included with Loop Mesh, but in this tutorial, I want to show you how to do the same thing to your entire mix or a portion thereof. We'll do this using the pitch shift process. Ironically, Steinberg went to great lengths to let you shift pitch without noticeable timing errors. But to create this effect, we're going to put the timing errors back in. Now, we're going to do this two different ways. I've thrown together a basic track to demonstrate the effect. Also, I've already exported the project and included the mix file as a separate track here. To keep things simple, we'll just work with the stereo mix, but obviously you can apply this effect to individual tracks too. So here's the unaltered track. To create our effect, select the track, then open the audio menu, select process, and select pitch shift. Now by default, Cubase will open the transpose window. For this, we want to switch to the pitch shift envelope. To start with, select the curve in the middle. Next, turn off the time correction by unchecking the box. This step is the key to the effect, by the way. Now, click on the line in the center of the window at the point where you want the effect to start. Now, add another point, which we'll use to create the effect. Finally, add a third point to bring your waveform back to normal. Now, I'm kind of just guessing here, but this will probably be around measure four. You'll need to spend some time with your project to get the placement just right. Okay, let's take a listen. Cool. All right, let's undo that. Just for fun, let's try this one more time, but this time we'll leave the time correction on. This will create a similar effect, but not quite as extreme. So you get the idea. You can also try combining this effect with changes to your tempo track for even more creative results. We hope you've enjoyed and learned from these videos. For everybody here at Streamworks Audio, thanks for choosing Cubase and thanks for watching.